Okay, so auto steer. I didn't think we'd get here ever, but here we go. So I've changed the GPS data uh, window here, and what it sends out is this 127 and 254. That's the start integer. So you only send bytes out to the auto steer module. So between the two of these, they make 32,766. And when that number comes up, you know that the next few bytes are going to be actual data. So that's like the start integer for the sentence. So coming back from the module, we have the proportional integral and derivative values. Um, these are the individual gains. And then the next three are the actual numbers used to determine the number in the pulse width modulation. That number, of course, goes from minus 255 for one direction to positive 255 for the other direction. So if we change and pick in different direction, there you see it's minus 255, so that means it should turn this way. And so that's all pretty basic. Now what we've done is these guys up here, you can adjust your proportional up or down, your integral or derivative or the overall gain. Um, so on the fly, you can change these. So here's point 0.1. You want a point two, point three, whatever. Um, you can adjust them on the fly, and it doesn't matter what you're using on the other end. Um, this individual, this last byte, is what you select out of these eight buttons. And I'll show you how that's done. So basically, the way you do it with a single byte to control all the values is, if you're sending a zero, that means nothing's changing. So this. Uh, the first, the least significant bit, bit zero. If it's a one, that means you want to increase. If it's a zero, that means you want to decrease. So the bit one denotes proportional. Bit two denotes integral. So all you do is you just send whichever one you want to change. And so if you receive a a, uh, a four, that means integral minus. If you receive a 5, that means integral plus. And so you can basically do seven different values that way just by using the 1 and the 0 for up and down and which bit you want to change. In, uh, for the Arduino code, you, uh, you first find the header. So you just add the two bytes together and when the header is 32776 yeah, 32,766, that is 127 as the high byte, 254. Once you found that, then the header is found. That means the next six bytes are valid information. You could do checksums and all that other stuff, but I don't know. So first byte is the relay. Second byte is what the speed is, your distance error, your heading error, and then that's that PID setting, whatever you're setting with the... Uh, on the GPS data dialog window, what you're doing with the plus and the minus. And then to decode, it's really simple. Um, take that PID sitting and you do a, a switch statement with it. If it's a 3, then you add your KP by 0.1. My, my KP values are um, my overall gain is 1, proportional gain is 0.1, my integral gain is 0 0.008, and my derivative gain is 3. So depending on um, how many decimal places and that sort of thing, you can add or subtract based on that. So uh, proportional increase or decrease by 0.1, uh, integral by 0 0.001, and the uh, derivative by, by a half, and then the overall gain by 0.1. If, if your integral was 0 0.0001, you would increase by, you know, one ten thousandths. So that allows you to adjust based on what your settings are. Again, this is gonna we've got to start somewhere. So uh, at least this allows you to be in Ag Open GPS and driving along and adjusting your PID values. And uh, the other thing you can do is, if one of these are adjusted, you can write it into the EEPROM in the Arduino, and then it stores it. And then that's where it always starts from. I haven't done that yet, but well, whatever. Um, so once the header is found and your data is ready, then you do the PID routine. Um, 
read the work switch, read the, uh, I have a potentiometer on the steering, um, right on the, from the tie rod to the frame, so I can read the steering position. If the distance error is 32020 and the distance error is 32,000, 32,000 means that it's the auto steer is on, but you're not beside a line, so it can't figure out what, um, there is no distance error. So that's two ways to determine. That is off, and that is an invalid number. Um, more than three meters away, don't turn the auto steer on, or if your heading error is greater than, than 0.4 radians, radians, then don't turn it on either. Shut the motor off and send that out to the motor drive. Um, if you're close enough to the line and you're reasonable angle and there's a valid line, then do the PID. So the PID is a basic PID loop. You do your proportional gain. Your integral is based on your, your last error. This is uh, anti-windup. Like if you're off a little bit on the line and it, it keeps accumulating, accumulating, well you don't want too big an error, so you limit how big an error for the integral. Um, the other thing I found in balancing robots is if you cancel out the integrated error as you cross the zero line, that seems to help an awful lot so that you're not wasting time as you cross the line to keep adding more error and trying now you have to decrease that error using integral. So that helps with uh, correcting that error faster in something as slow as, as steering. And of course the derivative is just your distance error minus your last error. Um, you can use the last last error if you need more gain or more differential between the two readings. That works too. Or you can do three. You can do an average of the last three or whatever. And of course, and then your drive value is equal to your proportional and your integral and your derivative value times the overall gain. And uh, constrain it to minus 255. Motor drive figures out which direction you want to drive. It sets the uh, the direction bit in the pulse width modulator and uh, since the pulse width modulation drive is from 0 to 255 uh, the direction bit sets a direction and since it's negative you just multiply by minus 1 so they're both positive. Then you analog right out to the pulse width modulation pin and voila! Okay, and to turn the relays off and on you simply just take the individual bits and you spit them out to the individual ports that the relays are connected to. I only have two connected here, but you can do all eight. Um, the setup just sets up whatever uh, relay pins you have connected to which pins on the Arduino. And that's pulse width modulation rate. And that's about it. It's, uh, it's fairly simple and seems to work pretty good. So some thoughts on PID setting and that sort of thing. I think it's a pretty slick, simple system, and once you have your values, then uh, you can either hard code them into the Arduino, or like I say, you can write them in to, uh, into EEPROM in the Arduino, so that you can adjust these on the fly, and as soon as you adjust them, they're written in the, in the EEPROM, and then they're used again next time you turn it on. So uh, I hope I answered some questions in terms of how we're going to do this. So yeah, you just write out the, uh, the different gains and what the actual p-values are, high value, and then derivative value and what that drive is. So if we go back to Ag Open GPS and uh, get it close enough, where's my uh, simulator? Squeeze a little closer by. Now you should see this pop up as soon as we're close enough. See now we're within three meters. So there's that negative 255. What that's saying is the cranker. Now you can see it's positive, so that's the differential term, getting the steering wheel to turn back. And uh, from then on, it's just a basic control system. It's no different than any other. So simple, simple. And thanks. I'm sure there's going to be lots of questions. And yeah, any, any ideas, any thoughts? Oh, yeah, and uh, there's the relay byte. So again, there's the start byte, relay byte. There's the speed times four. And uh, there's your the distance header, the distance error, and the heading error, and then this last one is the, uh, the eight or the seven possible combinations of buttons up and down. And that's it. Thanks.